Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on this beautiful 1988 and a half Lamborghini Countach yellow with chocolate interior, just a beautiful combo. Now this came from the UK, landed at JFK, was shipped up to the studio, and we're gonna get this thing cleaned up and ready for sale today on this episode of Drive and Protect. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this and many other channels to help content creators continue to create content for their subscribers. More on this later. First, I cleaned the wheels and washed the paint after shipping from Europe prior to polishing. Having a clean surface is critical to the polishing process, not just from a dirty perspective, but to recognize if the surface has some type of protection on it, meaning in the past somebody put something on it, based on how the water reacts to the paint. If the paint has contamination or a coating on it, the pad will either scratch the surface from the dirt embedded in the pad or just not correct the paint at all because it's only touching the coating on top of it and not actually the clear coat. So in this case, washing it, even though it's not really super dirty, it will eliminate the dirt and tell you if there's protection with let's say a spray coating by how hydrophobic the water rolls off the paint based on its contact angle. Contact angle, what does that mean? We have less than 90 degrees, that's what we call hydrophilic. A 90 degree angle is when let's say we have sealant on the car and it's starting to get a little bit old and you're saying, yeah, it's beating up a little bit, but not really. The third one with a really extreme angle where you have a much greater than 90 degrees, you can see right here, it's wide open because of how much surface tension's there. Uh, that's extreme hydrophobic coating. That's uh, all the coatings of today. Now this red line represents how much protection is on there. We have a, almost nothing, a little bit, and extreme, lots and lots of coating. On that note, when you do wash it, you hit it with soap. And if you've noticed, it doesn't bead off. It's because most soaps have surfactants in it. Surfactants are gonna change that surface energy and lower it to hydrophilic. I'm gonna show you a really cool example downstairs by adding soap to water and see what it does. I have foam in this little beaker here with water. And then I have regular straight water. And then my favorite thing, this is just wax paper. This is gonna represent the surface of our car as if you waxed it or coated it or whatever, right? So right off the bat, I'll take plain water Take the pipette, get a few drops in there, and you can see, just like a super coated car, the beads are just really tight, and it's, it's, it's something we love to see on our cars. Makes sense. Now I'll get rid of all the water, and I'll just sprinkle it around, I'm not squeezing anything, and now I have the tip of the pipette, and I'm touching it with just water. You can see I actually move it around, it's kind of neat. But I'm not changing the surface tension of that water. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna take a different pipette that I'll mix I haven't squeezed it, I'm not putting anything in there. Tap it off and it just has a little bit of residue of the soap on it. Now you can see, as soon as I touch that, boom, it flattens out the surface tension, it removes, it lowers that surface tension. And the reason we want that is we want all this lubrication that's in the soap to stay on the surface as we're wiping. And this is a great example of what happens when you're washing your car. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform on which to create your very own website. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. You can also use their blogging tools to categorize, share, and then schedule posts, which is really helpful on a website. Let's say you're going away for the weekend, that kind of thing, or you're in a meeting, you can still hit social media on a daily basis, which is great for sales. You can even display posts from your social profiles on your website and vice versa, automatically push from your website to all of your social media profiles so your friends can share it too, like this one here. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. You can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These are third-party tools that can help manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, and reconcile and even file sales tax while shipping items across the globe. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use promo code squarespace.com slash NYC for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now, back to the Lambo. With the hose water now mixed with a surfactant like paint soap or wheel soap respectively, I can lubricate the paint, the wheels, the glass, plastic, etc., and minimize potential scratching in the cleaning process. That's why you see the soap sort of sticking or clinging to the surface of the car. That's pretty cool. 
Now, the purple wheel cleaner I'm using, this is an alkaline-based cleaner, not an acid-based cleaner typically found in wheel cleaner solutions. I prefer using a slightly alkaline-based cleaner unless I have extremely neglected wheels that are strong enough to handle the firepower associated with acid-based cleaners. The best way to find the pH level of your wheel cleaner is on the SDS or the safety data sheet, SDS. It's usually in section nine under the physical and chemical properties section of your SDS. Now, the SDS should be listed on the website of the brand that you support, that you buy from, to find out more information about where it is on the pH level or the scale. I power wash again, not only to remove the lifted dirt and the soap, but to remove the surfactants so my paint can return to its hydrophobic characteristics. When I'm blowing the paint dry with the Master Blaster, you notice that the water is beating again because I power washed the surfactant off the paint. Again, pretty cool. See how quickly it beads and just runs under the pressure of the air? Just imagine if the towel had hydrate, it would be going nuts right now. Super, super cool. With the Countach now dry, check out the sanding marks in the paint and the Lambo emblem that needs to be addressed before it heads off to cars and bids. Okay, now we're gonna be focused on polishing the paint. As you can see, it looks really pretty, and I've also shut the lights off. So there's a couple things going on. Right off the bat, it is a light-colored car, so immediately people come up and go, wow, it looks great. Reason why is the scratches and swirls or anything, imperfections in the paint, they're less likely to be seen because the background is light and the scratches are light. So it sort of just blends in, it's like camouflage. Now on the flip side, if you were to take a black car and put white scratches on it, oh my gosh, this thing looks horrible, and people say black cars get scratched more than white cars. That's not true, they're equally scratched scratched, it's just the background. One is camouflage, meaning a light colored car like this versus a black car. So us as detailers, we sort of have to get around that. Step one is to shut the lights off and have one source of light that you can look into the paint and bang, all of a sudden the scratches, the swirls, whatever you're dealing with pops out. Now in this particular case, I'm gonna be doing a one step with a foam waffle pad, exfoliate polish, bring back the depth and the shine of most of the paint. It looks fantastic. This is in really good shape, but there are certain areas like this over here where at the factory, what happens is is they have a dust nip, meaning a piece of dust boop, lands on the car, the paint's still wet, it dries, now you have a little dust nip. You gotta go in there and sand it off. There's a drip of paint, et cetera, et cetera. So it happens all the time, it's totally normal. What the body shop professional does, goes in, sands it down, and I'm gonna give you a random example just for simplicity. A thousand grit, 2,000 grit, 3,000 grit, 4,000, 5,000, and they keep going up, and you sort of have to back your way out so it's nice and smooth, and then you can go in and polish. If you miss a step, or you jump from, let's say, you know, 600 all the way to 4,000, I'm making an example here, there's that big gap in between that you haven't gotten out and it will just sort of be there behind even if you put wax on it eventually you'll see it which is what I'm seeing now so for those areas in particular I'll go in with a three inch or a six inch and probably use a wool pad but the paint's going to dictate what it needs we do have a lot of surface area but when I'm done this thing's going to look spectacular All right, so I'm working on the door right now and you can see the lights are on overhead, there you go. And just so I can see what I'm doing as I'm working and I shine the light here and there and I'm looking very closely. But if you look at it from your perspective, meaning the camera right now, it looks pretty good. Pretty tight circle there. I'm just using an external light. Now what happens is if we come over here, shut off the lights right there. So when I go every you know a couple of minutes, I shut the lights off, walk around, look at it again. And then I work the panel with lights on just so I don't you know, stumble and fall and drop things like I just did. So that's the idea of, see the lights now catching it right there? That's the idea of using uh, one light source like this one here, those are scratches, and shutting off all the surrounding lights so you can see it better. So I'll take that out right now with the wool cutting pad right there. Afterwards, the scratch is now gone, but I wouldn't have noticed it without shutting off the lights or looking really, really closely to find it. As I was rounding third on the paint correction, Renan arrived for some extra reinforcements on the chocolate interior. 
To clean it, he used lather, an interior brush, and a microfiber towel. Now, this obviously wasn't disgusting by any means, but it was very tired and incredibly thirsty and in need of freshening up for sure. Now, these are usually harder to clean because there isn't a massive before and after. It's very subtle, but necessary on a super rare, expensive car like this one. But when we were done and we showed it to Matt at the end of the video, absolutely amazing. The transformation from when it came in to later, really, really huge, and that's gonna drive dollars, which is great. Once I finished the paint correction, Matt asked me to replace the old exhaust stickers with new factory updates. Now, at first, I used a wrapper remover and a plastic razor blade, but since the sticker had been heated up so many times in the past, it sort of embedded itself into the metal. So to get it off, I reheated it to a super high temp because I know the exhaust tip can actually handle that, again, for obvious reasons, it's an exhaust tip. It came right off after that. Once the sticker was removed, I then heated up the leftover glue, which kind of scraped it with the plastic razor blade, then used wrapper remover then polished with a one inch nano before ISO wiping everything just to remove the polish that I just put on there. Then I installed the sticker to make sure that it would actually stick long term. My only suggestion on this one is to make sure that the surface is not still kind of hot when you put the sticker on. If it is, it's going to slide around. It's going to super heat up the glue underneath and it's not going to stick properly. Ask me how I know. I messed up the first one. My bad. But let it cool down for a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to ruin a $35 factory sticker. Afterwards, I polished the smaller sections with my one inch polisher that I had out for polishing the exhaust. Then I coated the wheels while Renan shampooed the removable mats. Finally, Renan applied mousse conditioner to the chocolate seats before we installed Reflex Pro 2 coating to the freshly polished paint and we let it cure overnight. Bright and early the next day, I applied Frame Pro trim coat to the mirrors for a huge before and after. Next, I cleaned the glass, but this time I ran into some stubborn water spots that weren't removed with just basic cleaning. Now, water spots occur when calcium or magnesium, etc., hard water, aka, is left on the glass without being wiped first. As the water dries, the minerals get left behind and it can etch the glass. We've seen this all the time. You can use acid to sort of eat up the minerals or, in this case, a razor blade to shave them off the surface. Lastly, I applied mud to the rubber and waited for Matt to arrive, but when I was waiting, I actually found this under the seat. It's so tight, I'm gonna see if I can get one out. Espana. There's a big coin back there that I want. Oh, come on. Oh, what is this? A Euro. Like American Pickers Lamborghini style. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just got a wicked cramp in my butt. Hey, there he is. What's up, man? Check her out. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Gleaming like the sun. Bumblebee right there. Love it, love it. Wow. Look at this wing. Wow. Check out uh, the little tiny engine that's in there. Just a tiny one. Oh, a little baby motor, right? That is, that, that's, that's a motor right there. This is like a work of art. You can just see everything that they did in here. Yeah. That is crazy. Oh my gosh, what a transformation. This Testa de Moro interior, like without this, it just, it wasn't talk, it wasn't speaking the right language. Right. This is now, such a compliment to what is already an incredibly rare combo. I mean, there are only, there are only nine QVs in yellow. Of the nine QVs in yellow, three have this Testa de Moro interior. Really? So, I mean, you were already talking something that is properly rarefied air. 
and look at it now. This is this is this is killer, man. What killer. a fun project. Killer. But we do need to go for a drive. You're right, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, run into any tolls? <laughs> I found some change in the back. Isn't that cool? No way, man. That was under That's... the seat. All right, all right, you know. So if you get pulled over, you'd be like, hey man, Dude, I, have, I have two francs or you whatever those will, are. You always make sure I'm prepared, right? <laughs> Especially in the United States, you know what I'm saying? All right, just for the record, are those actual francs? I don't even... Find out more info on the Lambo and when it goes up for sale on Cars and Bids, click the link below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.